Hey friends, Dirk from TCI, and I'm back here uh, to run another network, this time at a car dealership. Uh, this is the IDF, the IDF that I was uh, shown. This is an old one. It's a lost cause. We're going to delete it, get rid of it completely, and then we're going to run some new wires in this interesting environment. Let me show you. So we're going to be doing new network drops in this environment. There's no drop tiles. It's all concrete, concrete pillars. There's a lot of obstacles. This will be an interesting challenge. Let me show you how we go about solving this. One of the first things I address is how many boxes of Cat6 to bring. I don't want to backtrack when I'm working on concrete, especially in the ceilings. So I bring as many as I need to do it in one. The star of the show will be these bridle rings. A bridle ring lets me slip the cables through nicely and there's a hole right here where I can use to fasten it directly to the concrete ceiling. In order to make that fastening happen, I'm going to use this Hilti cordless concrete nailer. The bridles connect directly to the tip, which you apply to the ceiling, and then you've got yourself a beautiful pathway. In order to get up to that ceiling, in order to apply the bridles, we're going to be using this scissor lift. This is something that we rented special for the occasion. This is Chase from TCI. He works with us and he's a bit of a daredevil. So he's going to be in charge of driving this around and drilling into the ceiling. This scissor lift extends roughly 20 feet into the air, which is just right for this ceiling. Earlier in the day, we were able to work out where in the ceiling we wanted the Cat6 to be. So we used the concrete nailer to fasten the bridle rings directly to the ceiling. The Cat6 will pass through it and we'll have a beautiful pathway. One nice feature about these rings is that they have an opening on the top of them. So if you've already run your wires, you can install the rings after the fact and then loop the wires through them, which you can see Chase doing here. That way, you can length out your Cat6 without worrying about pulling these out of the ceiling by applying too much pressure or friction or strain. So all we did in this case was run our Cat6 very roughly over the pipes, giving ourselves a clear shot of the ceiling and then after we had everything where we needed it to be, we simply lifted them up and placed them inside these rings. I may be a little biased, but I think that this looks more professional than this plumbing pipe that is covered with cables that's currently supporting most of the wires that were run in this place previously. With the cables lengthed out to their desired locations, we're going to use the concrete gun just a little bit more to come down this pillar. So there'll be rings here supporting the bundle as it comes down into the new IDF that we're going to build. Man, it wouldn't be a car dealership if there wasn't some old technology laying around that time forgot. This IDF used to support a security camera setup, but we're going to tear it out and replace it with a wall-mounted cabinet. This is Jeff. He's just finished removing the old equipment, and now he's bringing the wires that Chase has run down the wall. The first order of business is to get some plywood up before we can mount our cabinet. You can see here in this shot that only one stud covers this area of the wall. We're going to use that stud to get initially anchored with our plywood, and then we are going to supplement the supports using some butterfly toggles. With the plywood secured to the wall using the butterfly toggles, it's time to lift the cabinet up onto the wall. We've removed the doors and the hinges so that it's a little bit lighter and easier to handle. We're gonna use our ladder as a support and Jeff is gonna install this all by himself while I, helpfully, just hold a camera. Like you've seen us do in the previous videos, we sink a single screw into the back of this cabinet and then we use that to take the weight off. That single screw can support the weight of the cabinet while we get it level. Then we just apply the rest of the screws we need to fasten it to the plywood. With the cabinet secured to the plywood, we no longer need the ladder to support it. Checking back in on Chase and his assistant, he's clearly made a lot of progress running these wires. This network is starting to shape up and really beginning to look like something. While Chase finishes what he's doing distributing the wires, Jeff will terminate the cabinet's connections. As you've seen us do in other videos, we're using the simple all-in-one crimper and all-in-one jacks that are compatible with it in order to terminate this more quickly. After running all those lines, what we really want to do is not get back up in that ceiling on that lift unless we absolutely have to. So it's very important 
that we do some testing. These are the flute termination ends, and this is the tester. We're going to make sure that every wire that we ran actually works, and then we're going to label each one of them. The fluke modules have identifying numbers on them, so you just patch them into your patch panel, and then that way you know which one you're testing. You walk to the other end of that cable, wherever it happened to land, and then you test it there. Before I make the trek across this parking lot, I'm going to print out my labels so that I have less stuff that I'm dragging around with me. At each of the endpoints, we'll have the fluke perform this test to make sure that the cable is good. With all the endpoints checked out and confirmed good, it's time to wind down. The computer guys will come with their own switches and patch in their own equipment. They don't need us for that. They just need working infrastructure, which the fluke has confirmed for us. With that, we'll begin packing up and see ourselves out. I hope this has been an interesting video for you. And if you like installing networks, I've got plenty more coming. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.